Hello guys, welcome back. In this video we'll look at syntax errors and exception handling in Python. Syntax errors are generally when Python cannot understand what you're talking about. You're not following the syntax of the programming language, which means when you want to print something, you're not calling the print function with parentheses. Like here we have int 9, which means it's invalid syntax because int is a function and it does not have parentheses and closing what needs to be converted to an integer. Python's really good with writing up what's wrong with your code. Here there's another syntax error which is basically missing parentheses in print. Did you mean print 3 with parentheses, right? And then print is wrongly formatted. So that's how it tells you. And then here I've got a list. I'm creating a list with only one square bracket. The other bracket's not a square bracket so it says it, it puts a little arrow down there and says it's invalid, the syntax is incorrect. So you can replicate this here. It says print2, I don't understand what that means. Similarly, int function, this is still valid. You can close the parentheses in a new line and it'll still work. So if I run this, it should work fine. Print2, now that's not good, is it? So now this should all work. Well, there's something else down there that's not working. So we'll have a look at that. And yeah, like I said, this can also be broken break there and IntelliJ does a good job or PyCharm does a good job highlighting errors when you type them. So in general talking about syntax errors when you miss critical syntax it'll come up and show you a little arrow pointing where, where it thinks you had a problem with the syntax and um, it gives you an opportunity to fix that. But similarly here incomplete brackets for print statement unsupported operand type so when you try to add two unlike variables like a string and a number, it's going to complain about that. We'll look at divide by zero in, in a moment. We've got another example, so we'll, we'll see it there. So here, because two is a string, we have to convert it to an integer before we can convert, or well, before we can add it to another integer. So going uh, up to exception, so here I've got this while loop, and if I get rid of that, it's going to complain about syntax again, right? Invalid syntax. So if I fix that, it will be happy, but it'll run an infinite loop, so I won't uh, run that code. But now moving on to divide by zero. Oh, well, before that, if I uncomment this, if I run this now, it's going to say it doesn't know what 3 is not defined. So if you come up here and say 3 equals 3, now this should work. It's past the stage. And now here down there, I have two numbers, number 1, number 2, both are coming like just integers uh, that will pass in a moment and then I'm getting the num3 is number 1 by num2 so if I say 10 and 10 I should get a return of 1 that's good but what if someone gets naughty and does 50 divide by 0 and it says you cannot divide by 0 right if I didn't have this uh, in a try except else statement then it would look something like this num1 divided by num2 and if I run this now 22 0 it's gonna fail on this line number 20 so line 20 it says division by 0 so it's very clear in telling what it thinks is the issue or what the parser thinks is the issue now talking I will just comment this out talking a little more about this so try except is a very good way of handling errors in Python so if, if you can foresee what limitations the code you're writing has you can handle those errors like for example if at some point let's say you you want to parse a list but you don't know how long the list is going to be let's assume that because the list comes with a length function which tells you how long the list is but let's say you don't know so whenever the index of list goes beyond the length of the list you want to handle that error using like a printing something to the console, you could very well do that. And you can see I'm ex escaping with backslash with the single quotes within double quotes. Handling exceptions is uh, is really critical to successful programming, and uh, it is possible to write programs uh, that handle selected exceptions. So as long as you, like I said, foresee them and code for it, the try statement works as follows. First, the try clause, uh, the statements between the try and accept, basically the statements between these two lines, are executed. If there's no exception, then 
uh, the accept class is skipped. So nothing, this, this code doesn't run, but if there is an exception, then it gets to, so let's say this has a problem, it straight away switches to accept class and executes the statements here. If you have code that you want to include here, but it doesn't have to be uh, included because the exception, when it occurs, there's still a few things you want to do after you include that into the else class. So that's all in this video. It's great to see that you made it to the end of the video. If you'd like to download all my knowledge as a zip file, hit the subscribe button. To download it as a tarball, use like or share button.